And we back. The Chicago Bulls are known for being six for six in the championship. Shout out to Michael Jordan. But since 1998, the success here in this city with the Chicago Bulls has been a very, very small. But there was one team. Oh boy, there was one team that, that gave me so much hope, the most hope I've ever had in my lifetime. And then April 28th, 2012, I get, I get a flashback, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm trying to bring that Derrick Rose team to the place that we all knew they should have been, and that is getting a championship. Here's my roster. Now, I tried my hardest to find um, a roster that, that like took place in 2010, 2011. I went through the Xbox, I went through the PlayStation, I went to the PC version, and I couldn't find a really, really good one. I, I don't really know why. Um, Tom Thibodeau was on some crazy stuff where they got Todd Gibson. And the small four position. Oh no, that can't be real. No, this ain't this ain't the timeline I remember. I gotta look to see if Todd, if they ever gave Todd Gibson real, and I mean real small four minutes. The answer is uh, no. Thank God. All right, so these are his last couple seasons. But if we go all the way, oh snap, oh snap, he did. It ain't a lot. It ain't. There's barely any. But there are possessions here where they saying they thought that Todd Gibson was running some three. That's crazy. But. For the entirety of his career, he's been a, a 4-5. So it's weird that 2K would have him as a 3-4. So I put my 2010-2011 Chicago Bulls in current NBA. And we're going to rebuild them to fit the current mode of the way the league is going. Because this Bulls team, they weren't known for their three-point shooting. And obviously in the game of basketball in 2022, the three-point shot is super important. So in case you need a refresher on how good this team was, they won 62 games this season. 60 Two, the best in basketball, but we went against this juggernaut that is the Miami Heat, and we will talk about that in a second. 62 games, and as you can see, uh, nobody was really scoring over 100 points per game. Now in the game of basketball, if you don't hit 100, your team is awful. The Chicago Bulls attempted 17 threes a game, and they made six. In current NBA, there are players across the league that are making six per game. We as an entire squad was making six. So a lot of things have to change for us to get to the point we want to be in 2022. But we do have Kyle Korver, who played some of his best basketball here. Obviously, he left here and then ended up being an all-star eventually. But he played some of his best basketball here. Definitely a shooter. We got Booze. We got Joe Kim Noor, my favorite center in the history of basketball. And then we also got a bench that in and, and what the heck? Um, he had to be a roster filler because this, this ain't right. But in the time, the bench was solid. And obviously, looking back on it now, when you look at 2K Raiders, you're like, dang, was our bench even like that? I, I guess so. CJ Watson was always always really cool. And then Keith Bogus low-key started a bunch of games uh, during this era. So either way, that's dope. But I mentioned earlier that we won 60-something games, but we ended up losing, obviously. And that was because of this team. I want my revenge against LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. I want my revenge. So I'm rebuilding the team to beat every current basketball team, but also to beat this juggernaut that destroyed us in the playoffs, what, three times in five years or something like that? Yeah, I got my grudges. There are Heat fans that watch my videos and like, oh, Kenny still hate us from 2012? No, no, no. I hated these three in the moment. I love Bron now. Dwayne Wade, one of my favorite of all time. And Chris Bosh is dope. But in this moment, you can't, listen, I went into high school in 2011. So we talking freshman year, Kenny Beecham. Watching this team lose to the to the Chicago Bulls, or even before on to the to the Miami Heat, but even before that, before LeBron went here, he beat us when he was in Cleveland. He beat us when he was in Cleveland. So I just I just want a little bit of revenge on against, against LeBron. All right. So the first thing I want to do as a general manager of this team is trade Carlos Bulls. Um, shout out to the Bulls crews. I just don't think and I want to stretch for. For my guy, Derrick Rose. I'll also give up Corey, oh, I almost said Corey Brewer, Ronnie Brewer in this one. And we also got our picks. I wonder how valuable our picks are going to be. One and a half star, but that might be able to get us Tyrese Maxey in this. Uh, that, obviously, it's not realistic. I just brought two teams from the past to the, to the present. So obviously, it's not realistic, y'all. So I'm going to do the trade that I think fits best for our team. Whoa, this might be it. We said we needed three-point shooting. We needed a wing that we trust. Paul George does those things, man. Yeah, give me Paul George, bro. That's an easy trade. Boozer's going the, to the Clippers. Which, you know, the Clippers in the game of 2K are never, ever, ever good. They're never good. So I just broke up their duo before they ended up being in the lottery. And they picked that they gave up is going to be valuable. And now they can start Norman Powell. They're going to put Booze at the four and Zoo at the... F yeah, it's not a good roster. But hey, my job ain't to build them. My job is to build this team. 
So I don't want Cal Corver starting. I would much rather Cal Corver be our one of our sparks off the bench with that 92 three point shot. I also don't want Taj Gibson start. <laughs> I would rather Taj Gibson be that energy off the bench. And you know what? Let's get this out of the way right now. I don't want Taj Gibson to play a single second of backup small four like they got him playing. No, you're a backup center, my guy. This is 2022 now. You being 6'9 is not undersized. Actually, you will be a big power forward in the game of basketball today. You know what I'm saying? Because Paul George is at my shooting guard position, and you only want to install it to him. The game has evolved. Omir Sheik was a cool time. Omir got, uh, 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 he got paid. He got paid. Ended up with the Pelicans. It's cool seeing these old dudes. Kurt Thomas is dope. Brian Scalabrini now on the call for the Boston Celtics. Like, this team was a super fun team for me. I just miss it. Ha <laughs> ha. That's why we're doing this video. I really, really miss it. Okay, CJ Watson. And yeah, we don't really have anything else that's valuable. You know, Booze would be at an 86 overall and also be in... How old was Booze when he got here? Only 28 years old. He's basically going into his prime. Made sense that Paul George was in that finder. But now we don't really have those pieces like that. So we got to figure out how we get that small forward that we trust and get that power forward that we trust and also build, build an adequate bench. Scal was making $4 million at this time. It's low-key great for Scal and his family because he was not worth that four million but when he came off the bench and he pulled his, his uh sweatshirt back to pull out that jersey we knew some big stuff was about to happen i'm low-key intrigued by this trade we will have to pay pj washington after this season his shot tendency is low we probably raise it a little bit but i just i just want spot up three pointers crazy what's your three point rate nowadays it's a 77 so it's actually worse than i wanted it to be again i'm trying to i'm building around d rose right now and I know that for sure, even if we have an undersized four, we, we're cool because Joe Kim Noah is one of the best defensive players in basketball, even in this day. Even in this day. Anchor, box out beast, brick wall, challenger, menace, post lockdown, rebound chaser, workhorse, glove. I, I didn't see him switch on to guards and sit down in that chair and get a stop. You know what I'm saying? So even though the, the game basketball has evolved a little bit away from the Joe Kim Noah types, he still got it done. And I love that. He had Claymore increase the ability to knock down perimeter shots while spotting up patiently. He had one of the ugliest jump shots I've ever seen, but when it went in, it was fun. So actually the PJ Washington trade don't uh, intrigue me too much anymore. Do we want to move on from hot sauce Cal Corver? He was just, I just feel like he was so fun for us. Can we replicate what he does with somebody in current basketball? I don't know, but I'm looking at his contract and stuff. And he might be the only thing that's valuable outside of the people that I want to keep. They'll also give us Terry Rozier. Okay. All right, y'all. I think I might have to do the PJ Washington right now. Because Terry Rozier, bro, Terry Rozier will be a backup on this roster, right? Or we can start him at the two and move PG to the three. Either way, we're doing this trade. Terry Rozier as a backup point guard is, is, or shooting guard, whatever, fits the mold of what Tom Thibodeau used to do back in the day with CJ Watson, Nate Robinson, John Lucas III. He loved a really small, that's why I'm low-key kind of keeping Isaiah Thomas around a little bit. He loved a really small point guard that can be a spark. And right now they want Terry Rozier to start and move PG to the three. I don't hate it, but defensively 6-1 and 6-3 guards in my backcourt, I don't really love. If I'm keeping Terry around, which I don't even know if I will just yet. If I'm keeping Terry around, I think I want him to be in our bench role and just be that ultimate spark. That 21 M's makes it valuable, though. That 21 M's makes them valuable to other teams around the league to make that money match. Like Jeremy Grant, ooh, as our four. Oh, Jeremy Grant is low-key, maybe perfect for what we're trying to do right now. Jalen Brunson's dope. Larry is pretty dope. Hold on. All right. Let, let, me, let me think about this. Let me think about this. Would I rather have Jeremy Grant or Larry Marketing right now on what we're building? You know, if I'm thinking more of the defensive side, obviously Jeremy Grant is the fit. But if I want some, oh and want another portion of Chicago Bulls history, I might go Mr. Marksman, man. The finisher. He can play the four. He can play the three. Bring him back to a Bulls jersey. It's a... Ooh, but, but then again, Jeremy Grant is so nice. He's the switchability on defense. He can score if you need him to, or he can... Like, he can do so many more things as far as versatility goes. But the... Hmm. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do the Larry Marketing. For the sake of um, sake of the Chicago Bulls, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's just make that deal. And he's under contract for two years. This is not a one-year thing. I want to win multiple championships. That's how sad I am about my Bulls right now. I want to see them win multiple times. So this is not a one-year thing. Loki Todd is kind of sticking around, ain't he, as a starter? So D. Rose, Paul George, Lowry, Todd Gibson, and Joe Kim Noah. Bench is bad, though. Bench is real bad. If Isaiah Thomas is our second-best bench player, something ain't working. 
boom. Beautiful trade right here. Cam Johnson's coming to the team. Campaign is coming to the team. So now Cam can start at the four. Oh, I did trade for PJ Washer, did I? Yikes, I forgot about that. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna move Taj over to the back of five. Omir Sheik, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to like uh, not play. You just kinda here to be uh, moral support for the other bigs on the roster. So now we're gonna move Taj over to the five. And now we got Cam Johnson. So I guess PJ Washington, Taj Gibson, Cameron Payne is our bench unit at the moment. We need a wing that defends well. And then I feel good. Boy, is this team beating the Heatles, though? That's what I keep got to think. I got to keep thinking about the Heatles because that's the team we're really going against at the end of the day. Do I try to see if Paul George's value was high enough for us to flip him? I'm just going to look. I'm just going to look. There was some cool stuff out there. Not enough for me to pull the trigger and get rid of PG. So you're, you're here to stay. I mentioned it's a multi-year year thing. He regresses after the year one. So we got to keep that in mind as we continue on this video. Um, we need a backup wing, I mentioned. Omir Sheik, I said we don't need you, really. So we're going to throw you... And somebody that we signed in free agency because we don't have enough players in that free agency. Oh, oh, Miles Bridges is here. We probably, I was going to say we probably had the money, but I forgot we did a bunch of trades already. But you got to think about it. I'm, I'm thinking about the 2010, 2011 salaries. People was playing for pennies in comparison to what basketball players are getting paid nowadays. So, you know what I'm saying? A, a lot of the old heads and old NBA history kind of salty. Oh, he ain't good enough to make that type of money. Hey. Hey, you was just born in the wrong era, I guess, because people are getting paid nowadays. Low-key, Josh Green is kind of perfect for what I want to do. Can I somehow get a trade done without giving y'all that first? I would rather give you this 2023 second. Ha, ha, ha. I don't want Frank Milikina, but you can have those two seconds. Ha, ha, ha. I don't want Frank Milikina, but you can have another second. I mean, I'm willing to give it up, but I would rather not. There we go. There we go. Four second round picks. Omir Sheik for Josh Green. Josh Green, you're going to grow with this team, man. You're going to be our Jimmy Butler. You know what I'm saying? Jimmy ain't even drafted yet, but I think Jimmy's drafted this season, right? The next season, the Bulls came in with Jimmy Butler, who didn't really play a lot in his rookie season. Yeah, 2011-2012, Jimmy Butler played eight minutes per. But y'all know what Jimmy Butler turned into. Uh, Josh Green is about to be our Jimmy Butler. Good comps. David Nwab is back, so that's fun. Are we good? Okay, so the first game of the season is against the, against the team that we we despise. You know what I'm saying? The rivalry is real. They got Shane Battier, of course, and then um, Mario Chalmers. Mario Chalmers. Heard you pronounce both ways. I've already said Mario. I've heard him refer to himself as Mario. So I just, I, I'm just i just going to say Mario Mario, and we, we beat them. LeBron gave a classic LeBron performance. He's back to 27. The other LeBron that's actually on the Lakers is no longer there. So that Lakers first round pick that the Pelicans don't have. Not in this simulation. Everybody got their own picks. Uh, so the Lakers are probably going to be a lottery team this season. But D. Rose and Paul George both combined, they combined for 60. Call that 82 if you want to put Lowry Market in there. You know what? I'm going to do this now because we've had Lowry Market on teams recently. And he always is upset with his touches. So let's get his shot tendency up. So he... um. Is a little at least happy. Same thing with Cam. You know, as long as you get their shot Tennessee up, that's just what I'm, that's what I'm learning. Uh, they won't be upset if they get the opportunities to look at the basket. So cool. We win the first game of the year. I feel good. Yep. Um, so here are the awards. Kevin Love won sixth man of the year. LeBron won defensive player of the year. Um, so that's that's funny because he finally got the one that he's been looking for. Tom Thibodeau does does that look like Tom Thibodeau? It kind of does, but it doesn't at the same time. Uh, did they try? Did they de-age him? Like, what the hell is this? Almost 60 wins for us, though. And that's supposed to be me. You know what I'm saying? My, my boy my boy Bruce Young. That's supposed to be me. I was expecting to see Derrick Rose on the first team. He's on the second team. I did peek at his stats, I'm going to be honest with you. And I saw that he was averaging 30 and 11 with uh, almost 50, 40, almost 50, 49. And I thought he was for sure at least all NBA first team. But Ja was averaging 30, 33, 9, and 7. So, you know, you got to be more complete, D-Rose. Those couple rebounds don't cut it. You need at least seven to be in the conversation with these other dudes because these other dudes are sim demons. You know what I'm saying? Things are crazy. D-Wade makes All-NBA third team, averaging 27, 9, and 7. He hit a total of zero three-pointers on the season, and he attempted a total of zero three-pointers on the season. 2012-2013, one three-pointer a game. So that means he shot 80-something. Oh, 66, because he only played 60, get 69 games. So I, I didn't think he was going to be out there shooting six threes per. But um, zero is kind of crazy. Because you know du Dwayne Wade, they also have two all-defensive all, in, all defensive players. So we're in trouble. We have one. Uh, Dwayne Wade loves a good half-court heave. And that, that alone is getting you a couple three-point attempts on the season. So we're the one seed. But not by much, because that, that Miami Heat team is one game behind us. And my job... 
Larry is still upset, even though we were giving them the touches that he wanted. So that's that's something that you're probably gonna get traded next season. Joe Kim is upset? No. No, he's the last person that would be upset with anything. Also, Joe Kanoa attempted more threes than Dwayne Wade. A lot more threes than Dwayne Wade. Why? Why? Why, 2K? Let's do it again. On the numbers, Joe Kim Noah in his career attempted 16 threes, and he was in the league from 22 to 34. Why the heck do they got this man attempting 54 threes on the season? I don't know. I don't. I just don't ask. Larry, Larry, please just help us win this championship, and I promise you, we'll you, we'll free you. First round, we're going against the Indiana Pacers, who have Reese, Buddy. You know what they team look like. They didn't make any changes. Our lineup looks really good. I think it looks well rounded. If anything, we should be able to to get past these dudes pretty easily. Um, the Miami Heat are down 3-0. By the way, the Miami Heat got eliminated. They got swept by the Toronto Raptors. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. No, 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 no way, no way, no way, no way. Give Derrick Rose any minutes he needs. Give Paul George any minutes he needs. We're not about to, because were we up 3-0? We're not getting reverse swept. We're not getting reverse swept. Nope. Because, because again, freshman year me will be heartbroken. All right, we win it. Okay. Boy, don't y'all do that again. Don't y'all dare. Do that. Shout out to D Rose in that game seven shooting 16 free throws. I'm actually upset that the Miami Heat got swept like this. Lose by two, lose by a lot, lose by a lot, lose by eight, lose by two. Yeah, I mean, the series had a couple close ones, but Freddie and them, 24 points in the playoffs, and Scotty, 10 points in the playoffs. It was a defensive grinded game, it looks like. Series, it looks like. And um, the, uh, LeBron James averaged 27, 10, and 9. Good splits. Just wasn't enough. Huh. Imagine, imagine losing the first round. Could not be me, even though it almost was me. We should be more worried about this team. D Rose versus Garland. Okay, I like that matchup for us. Donovan Mitchell versus Paul George. Paul George's defense might be able to slow him down a little bit. Lowry versus Karis. Uh, Obviously, their front court is uh, really, really good. So I'm a little bit afraid of that. But game one is a win. D Rose was great. And Joe Kim might not have shot it great, but he definitely had a huge impact on this win. Great. Game two is also a win. Derrick Rose, 17 free throw attempts. Game three, Derrick Rose, seven free throw attempts. Oh, man, Paul George with the near triple-double. Just close it out. There we go. We get to the conference finals to go against these 76ers. They pick up Melo out of free agency to be that four. Carmelo and Tobias Harris on the same roster is kind of funny. I feel good about this matchup. Joe Kim Noah clamp up that boy JoJo. Yeah. I, I mean, he almost had a triple-double for show. But 8 for 22 for a center is bad. Joe Kim Noah, you're that guy. And you do... You, uh, Joe Kim Noah, you're that guy. Game 2 is a win as well. And Embiid had a better game, but it's only 24 points. James Harden had a triple-double, but it didn't matter. Because PC-13 gave us 40, 10, 8, and 5. D-Rose, where you go, bro? Okay, he fouled out in 25 minutes. That's cool, because Cameron Payne came off the bench. It was super impressive. We're here, man. I don't care about the game... Okay, I was going to say, I don't care about the game the game stuff. But here, we, here we are in the finals. Go against Ja Morant. Don't they compare current Ja to Prime D Rose? Oh, we're about to see it, I guess. All right, all right, all right. Game one is a Grizzlies win where Ja outplayed D Rose. D Rose fouled out again. He keeps fouling out in this, this playoff run, man. There we go. If he's on the court, he's, he's dominant. He had five three-pointers. Five. Five of them thanks. When he's on the court, he's dominant. It's about keeping him on the court, I guess. He can't stay out of foul trouble. There's another win. And Ja gave a triple-double, and he fouled out in 36. But Derrick Rose gave us 39, 9, and 3. Look at our bigs getting the boards. Joe Kim getting a couple blocks and a steal. 3-1. Yeah. Hey, you can get compared to D. Rose, but there's only one. He averaged almost 40 in the finals with 9 assists and 4 boards. That makes me feel really good to see my team do that. But it ain't over. I best believe it, it ain't over. We going for the repeat, ladies and gentlemen. We need another one. We need to let the world know that that was no fluke. That we really built like that. That we are the best constructed team, even though the Heatles went out to sign. Oh, you know what? The first year the Heatles, they didn't win a championship, did they? <laughs> they didn't win a championship in this version, this universe either. So maybe they look better this time around. Larry, I'm going to free you up. You're going to go to Atlanta. You're going to have the best year of your career. We're bringing in DeJounte Murray. You're going to move um, an older Paul George over to small forward. Maybe it's less, less taxing on his body. Maybe not. I don't, I don't really 
no. But we he played so well last season. Even if his overall drops a little bit, we still feel good about PG-13 being on the roster. We also have another... We have to, no. I'm sorry. And, and the lore of Chicago Bulls fandom. Paul George, you got to go back to your old number because the number 13 is exclusively for Joe Kim Noah. So we do have our mid-level exception. We might go get like, I think I just saw Jordan Clarkson to potentially come off the bench. I kind of like the idea of that. Uh, so that might be what we use our, yeah. We might use our mid-level on Malik Beasley because he's slightly younger, so he will not regress. Who else is here? Karis LeVert, eh. Terrence Davis is cool, but he's a small less 6'4". Uh, yeah, let's bring in Malik Beasley. Let's bring in Malik Beasley. And um, I brought this team here for no reason because Wade said he's out. Deuces. I'm gone. He went to the Charlotte Hornets. Bronze stayed, though. So we don't even have to worry about them. The Wizards get booze cruised. I don't know what's going on in this simulation. I brought the Miami Heat in specifically to go against them in the playoff series. And they didn't bring up to their, their side of the bargain. Rashad Lewis is sitting in free AC. Sure, bring him here. Go get, get you a cha another championship, Rashad. Yeah, yeah you get a, a drop from Paul. But not a lot. By, not by a lot. Um, they didn't live up to their side of things. And they disbanded the roster. I mean, we're just that, we were just that nice. We didn't even go against them. That sucks, bro. I really want to see that matchup in a series. But... Whatever. You know what I'm saying? If y'all win, maybe he stays. So, D-Rose, DeJounte, and PG is kind of elite. Joe Kim, can I turn? I'm turning the shot three-point tendency of Joe Kim Noah down, bro. They're, th those are L possessions. D-Rose in the injury list universe, I'm okay with giving him 38 minutes per. First game against the Washington Wizards, against our old guy, Booze Cruz, Carlos Boozer. He had five turnovers at the power forward position, by the way. And Derrick Rose gave us MVP this man, bro. This That's my second objective. Get Derrick Rose the MVP. Second objective unlocked, man. Objective failed. Uh, we we had an idea, but we didn't we didn't know. Uh, rookie, sixth man of the year. Okay, okay. LeBron wins defense player of the year again. I wonder if they were still good. We won 65 games, so we're doing our thing. But I wonder if they were still good. D Rose is not even on second or third team. Rose missed it completely? Oh wow. That's 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 hater. That's hater mentality. Joe Kim is on first team defensively, so that's fun. He still ended up attempting threes though. Six more. He took the more threes. I turned his. <laughs> all right, whatever. It don't matter. It don't matter. Wow. D Rose didn't make an all NBA team. I don't know what his numbers. I didn't peek this time around. 26 9. Okay, so his numbers went down, but not by enough for me to say, ah, he's not worthy of an all NBA appearance. He's a literal 99 overall. DeJounte comes in and takes a little bit of uh, the heat off when it comes to the, the ball handling ability. Joe Kim is somewhat upset. He just, he just, I mean, I don't care. This is our last year. Feeling aggro about how things are around here. It's good to be thought of being worthy of being an all-defensive team, but he's sad. It's the furthest you could get from Joe Kim Noah's real-life personality. That's the crazy part. The Miami Heat not, didn't didn't make playoffs. So that's, that's kind of fun for this video, right? They won 28 games with Bron, who made an all-NBA first team. Ricky Rubio and Josh Pre... Wow. Yeah, nah. I understand. Yeah, I understand. What about you, Chris? Seven, yeah. I mean, you shot 55% from three on... No. 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 No! You're not telling me that Joe Kim Noah is attempting 50 more threes than Chris Bosh. This man, Chris Bosh, literally has an 81 overall three and took nine on the entire season. 2K has to be held accountable. Uh, <laughs> he's have to be. Man, I just wish there was a good competitor. That's all. I just want a competitor. Somebody else that can do what they doing but better. Either way, um, our Bulls team is really good. Exactly what we thought they were going to be. The Atlanta Hawks, Larry Markkinen's on this team unless they traded him. So he might be able to get his little revenge. They might have traded him. Or, or is he coming off the bench as an 85 overall and didn't win six man of the year? Um, yep. And he's upset. Hmm. Weird. I don't know, Larry. If, if you're the one upset in every single situation, um, wait, wait, what's the saying goes? I forget how the saying goes. I don't know. It's something to do with you being the problem. Though. That's that's how that's the ending. That's the moral of the whole story. You might be the problem. Here's our rematch to the 76ers, but instead of Carmelo, they got uh, George Niang. Yang gang stand up. Uh, I was gonna say if we lose to this team, I'm gonna be upset. But instead, we get a not a rematch. It's our first time going against the Boston Celtics, who have Thaddeus Young at the four. So that means Marcus Smart and Al Horford is on that second unit. Obviously, one of the more deeper teams of basketball. Do they have the juice? Oh, they might. Jalen Brown. Jason Tatum with a 26, 17, and 8 and 4 blocks game. But Jalen Brown with a 41 piece. They also have Kelly O'Lennon, Luke Cornette. Um, so they don't have Al Horford. 
but they do still have Marcus Smart. Okay, who had five steals, by the way. So we got we to tighten it up defensively or offensively. Joe Kim with a five block game himself. So thank you, Joe Kim. Seven offensive rebounds that came in handy, and we beat them. Game three, big game. We lose. All right, shorten this rotation now, and let's not get... Look at look at people being upset about their PT and shot attempts. Bro, we're in the conference finals. At the minimum, you got just a couple more games left on the season. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're going to lose to the Seas. We're going to lose to the Seas. Come on. Come on. We in the TD Garden. We win this. We go back to the UC, and the UC is a crazy place to play. They didn't do it. They got spanked. Should have kept Larry marketing, I guess. Also, this is one of the worst game seven performances of all time. He's obviously shaving points. He needs to be investigated because 1.5 turnovers and not a made field goal for my starting power forward. Lock that man up. He deserves to be locked up, and we lost the eventual champion, Boston Celtics. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. I saw a ring for my Bulls, and that's all I can ask for.